Hi, this is Millie Kay, and it's Saturday, May 25th, 2019. And the subject of today's video is what are river releases at the Oroville Dam? And I'm showing you a chart or a graph from water.ca.gov, and it gives a, a literal flow chart of how water gets uh, conveyed throughout the Oroville Thermolito complex. And I'm not going to uh, focus on the graph right now. First, I wanna give you an overview and we'll get back to the graph at the end of the video. Here's an overview of the entire Oroville Thermolito complex. Thermolito is a little town right by Oroville. And as you can see on this satellite view, the forks of the Feather River are flowing into the Oroville Reservoir. Here is the Oroville Dam. And when water comes out of the reservoir via the spillway, the Hyatt Power Plant, or the River Valve Outlet System, it goes into this Thermolito Diversion Pool, which really is the Feather River because they dammed up the Feather River when they built the dam. But they do call this about four and a half mile section the Thermolito Diversion Pool. And when the water gets um, here, there's a diversion dam where water can continue to go down the Feather River or be diverted over to the Four Bay. From the Four Bay, it can go to the After Bay, which is here. And the After Bay has an outlet in it that also goes into the Feather River. So if we look at the CDEC chart, California Data Exchange Center, uh, statistical uh, data. This is the most recent one as of the making of this video. You can see that outflows are 6,961 right now and river releases are 7,059. That's cubic feet per second. So sometimes people wonder how can more be coming out of as river releases than what they're actually outflowing. And I'll explain that. So this is a good example because river releases are bigger than outflows. So let's go back to when that water comes down to the diversion dam. This is the diversion dam where the water from that Thermolito diversion pool which is here, can be sent down the river through this diversion dam. This is the Feather River. Or it can go through this power canal, which can convey water both ways. It, it can go down this uh, power canal to the four bay. And I'll show you this in better perspective. So here's the diversion pool and Here's the water coming down the Feather River after it goes through the diversion dam. And there's a power plant right there. And here's the power canal that takes it to the four bay. This is the four bay. And at the end of the four bay, there's another dam and a power plant. And the water can go through there to the after bay. The after bay looks like this. So here's the after bay, and here's the river outlet that's in the after bay. So if we go back here, you can see uh, the after bay down here in the left bottom corner and the river outlet. So you've got water coming into the Feather River from there and back here from the diversion dam. Those two... Uh, numbers, the release numbers going through the diversion dam and the river outlet make up that that figure of river releases. And let me go back to that graph. So if you look here, it's a very easy way to see that in the Oroville Thermolito complex, these 
big triangles in light blue are reservoirs, and then the dark blue bars are dams, and the yellow with the X's are power plants. So you can see right uh, in, at a glance that there's three reservoirs, uh, one, two, three, four, five dams, and three power plants, two of which are reverse pump plants that can also pump water back, uh, which results in literally water can be in the after bay, be pumped back to the fore bay, go through that two-way power canal, back to the diversion pool, and up into Lake Oroville. So you can get water all the way from the after bay all the way back into Lake Oroville. And however, that plant uh, at the between the four and after bays experienced a fire in 2012. And I don't know if it's up and running again yet, but uh, for a time, for a number of years since 2012, it was not able to um, to use the pumps or the generators, but they could flow water through there to get it to to that after bay. And let's go look at this after bay. Uh, so here's that plant, and then when it gets to the after bay, also there are outlets, other outlets beside the besides the river outlet that takes water to other canals and water companies, they have to satisfy water rights because when they built the dam, uh, people in this area held water rights and they still have to fulfill those. As a matter of fact, in, in some of the releases from this after bay, they have to have the water at a certain temperature. The water has to sit there and get to a certain temperature uh, when it's being delivered to the farmlands because if it's too cold, it damages the rice crops. So it's quite a balancing act that they do to, to keep this water flowing to the right places uh, at the right times and at the right levels. So again, here's that river outlet. I'll make this a little bit bigger. And as you can see, they can let the water out and they can measure the water as it comes out here. Um, and that's how they can get at those two figures for, for the river release figure. And if you read on the C deck chart, let me get it here. Outflow from Oroville includes all releases from the Oroville Dam, Hyatt, Spillway, Low Flow Outlet. That's the river valve outlet system. That's what outflows include. While river release pertains to the Oroville complex as a whole, which includes any releases from the diversion dam gates and Thermalito after bay river outlet. So that really explains it. And if we go back, if you look from the time the water gets to the diversion dam here, and goes down the Feather River all the way from that diversion dam to the river outlet here is called the low flow channel. And after that, it's the high flow channel. And the river continues on, the Feather River continues on down to the Marysville, Yuba City area. And let's see, I think that explains that. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you, basically that um, how it works about those river releases. And I'd like to thank everyone for, uh, for your 
views and your subscriptions. I've reached over a thousand subscribers now. So YouTube allows me to communicate with my community with other methods such as text updates. And I haven't tried that out yet. But if you're signed up or preparing to sign up, if you hit the bell by the subscribe button, it, you can sign up for those types of notifications. And I just want to thank everybody for all your views um, over these years that I've been doing this. I really appreciate uh, all of your views and comments and participation and support. Thank you, and I'll see you later.